So let's deal with special channels. Now when you happen to study the various types of channels, we come across five to six kinds of special channels and the first one what we'll be dealing with is symmetric or uniform channel. Now let me consider P of Y given X with three input symbols as well as three output symbols Y1, Y2, Y3. A channel is said to be a symmetric or uniform channel if the elements of each row keep repeating but they are in different order. So if you observe P of Y given X, you find that in the first row you have the probabilities P of Y1 given X1 is 1 by 2, P of Y2 given X1 is 1 by 3 and P of Y3 given X1 is 1 by 6. And in the second row we have the same values, the same elements but they are in different order. And the same thing continues here. So you have 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 6 present in the third row but they are in the different order. So a channel is said to be symmetric or it is said to be a uniform channel if the second as well as the subsequent rows of the channel contain the same elements of that of the first row but they are of different order. Right. So this is P of Y given X. Now if I need to draw the diagram, now how do I draw it? So consider x1, x2, x3 and the output y1, y2, y3. Now from here x1 given y1 the probability is 1 by 2. So if x1 is being transmitted so the probability of receiving x1 at y1 is 1 by 2. So you have this is 1 by 2 y2 given x1 the probability of receiving the symbol y2 if x1 is transmitted is 1 by 3. So this is 1 by 3 and the probability of receiving y3 given x1 is again 1 by 6. So this is 1 by 6. Now next probability of receiving y1 given x2 being transmitted is 1 by 3. So this is 1 by 3. Next is 1 by 6 and then you have 1 by 2 right now what about the last one you have p of y1 given x3 is 1 by 6 so this is 1 by 6 next you have 1 by 2 and then 1 by 3 right so this is an example of a symmetric or a uniform channel so now how do we calculate the channel capacity now to find the channel capacity we have to find h of b given a and we find that since the elements of each row remain the same h of b given a is a constant so let me call that as h and that would be equal to summation j equal to 1 to s p of j log 1 by p of j. Now this is with the assumption that there are r number of inputs and s number of output symbols so it's going to be what is h it's going to be 1 by 2 log to base 2 of course it's going to be log to base 2 here 1 by the first one 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 so we'll take an example and we'll see that so this is going to be a constant and that is h now what is mutual information so we know that the expression for mutual information h of b minus h of b given a now we know that this is a constant so therefore this is h of b minus small h where h is a constant here. Now how do we find the channel capacity? The channel capacity is given by the expression c equals max of the mutual information i of a comma b. So that's going to be max of so we know that i of a comma b is this expression which is h of b minus h. Now this h is a constant so therefore it's going to be max of h of b so maximum of h of b minus h. So when will the entropy of the output symbols be maximum that will be maximum when it is equal to the number of output symbols. So here this value h of b will be maximum only when I have log s to base 2 minus h. So h of b which is the entropy of the output symbols will be maximum if and only if all the received symbols become e equiprobable and since there are s number of 
output symbols it's going to be log s to base 2 so we have the channel capacity c which is equal to log s minus h so these are the formulas which we need to remember so what are the expressions we need to remember h of b given a is nothing but h given by the sum of probabilities log probability of each row and next we have the channel capacity which is equal to log s minus h so if you remember these two we'll be able to solve problems so let's take an example for the given channel matrix find the channel capacity so we know that h of y given x is nothing but equal to h find h of y given x which is going to be a constant which is equal to j equal to 1 to 3 p of j log 1 by p of j so this is equal to so we find that the values of each row remain the same so it's going to be 1 by 2 log 2 it's going to be log to base 2 1 divided by 1 by 2 so it becomes log 2 plus 1 by 3 log to base 2 1 divided by 1 by 3 so 3 goes on top plus 1 by 6 log to base 2 1 divided by 1 by 6 so it becomes 6 so if i find the value in log to base 2 i get the value as 1.4591 bits per message symbol so make sure that you do the calculations correctly by taking the value in log to base 2 so this is h of y given x next we need to find the channel capacity channel capacity is given by log s to base 2 minus h so what is s s happens to be the number of outputs so how many outputs do we have how many output symbols it's equal to 3 there so therefore it's going to be log 3 to base 2 minus h is 1.4591 so therefore c would be equal to 0.12 five eight bits per second okay so this is of course with the symbol rate being equal to one message symbol per second right so this is how we find the channel capacity so i've already calculated the value so make sure that you do the calculations correctly and check for the channel capacity c so let's take another example so second example we need to determine the channel capacity of the channel shown here so you have x1, x2, x3, x4, y1, y2, y3, y4. So the channel diagram is shown. So first we need to write the channel matrix. So the channel matrix P of y given x is equal to. So there are four input symbols x1 to x4. And four output symbols y1 to y4. And then I write the channel matrix or no noise matrix. So P of Y1 given X1 is 1 by 2 and P of Y2 given X1 is 1 by 2. The remaining are 0. Next, P of Y1 given X2 is 0. P of Y2 given X2 is half. P of Y3 given X2 is 1 by 2 and then you have 0. Next, P of Y1 given X3 and Y2 given X3 is 0 and the remaining are half, right? So P of Y4 given X3 and P of y3 given x3 is 1 by 2 and then p of y1 given x4 is 1 by 2 the remaining two are 0 and then again you have half so now this is an example of a symmetric or a uniform channel because we find that the elements of the first row are repeated in the second third and the fourth but the order is different so now we need to find the channel matrix for that i need to find h which is going to be a constant which is h of y given x given by the expression j equals 1 to 4 p of j log to base 2 1 by p of j so it's going to be 1 by 2 log to base 2 1 divided by 1 by 2 is log 2 plus 1 by 2 log to base 2 1 divided by 1 by 2 is 2 right so this log 2 to base 2 is 1 so you get 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 which is going to be 1 bit per message symbol so this is h so after we calculate h we need to find c so c is log s to base 2 minus h where s happens to be the number of output symbols right so since there are four columns s is going to be four so we have log 
4 to base 2 minus 1. So the log 4 to base 2 is nothing but 2 minus 1. So that is going to be 1. So in this lecture video, we have understood what is a symmetric or a uniform channel and we have taken a few examples. So in the next few lectures, we shall discuss a few more special channels and also take a few examples. So do not forget to like, share and subscribe and press the bell icon to get notifications of all the further uploads and thanks for watching.